Hello YouTube, RJ. I know when you clicked on this link, you were thinking clickbait for sure. But I'm here to tell you that's not true. By the end of this video, I'm going to convince you that it wasn't clickbait. Now we've got two amateur radios here, 2 meter and 440 both. This one is a Beifang GT5R. This one is a Yaesu FT70D. Now, what's the difference between these radios? Well, for one is the price. This one, the Baofeng, I paid the amazing sum of $25 to purchase from Amazon. The Yaesu 70D, on the other hand, I paid six times that amount, $150 to buy this from Ham Radio Outlet. Now, when you pay that kind of difference in money, you have certain expectations. For one, you would assume that this is a higher quality radio in most ways. That would be only logical to assume. I mean, who spends six times as much for something that's not as good as another item? And of course, being a Baofeng, you can immediately say, well, you know, that makes sense. Baofengs are cheap. We know that, for example, this radio is probably going to put out more spurious emissions than this radio, just on the quality and being this is Yezu and this is a Baofeng. The other thing that we know is this radio probably struggles to put out the power that it advertises, where the Yezu probably does it very easily. These would be normal assumptions you'd have buying radio these radios. I'm here to tell you, you might be surprised. We're going to jump in and we're going to do some tests of both these radios on the bench. And we're going to look at how many watts they actually put out and what's their emissions look like. I'll let you be the decision of which one's the better radio by the end of the video. We're on the bench now. And we've got our two radios. We have a Baofeng GT. 5R that I just purchased. I've had this for about a week. We've got a Yaesu FT70D, which I've owned for approximately two and a half weeks. Brand new, both of them. They both have just come off charge. We want to do our test, both of them fully charged, since battery voltage can't have an effect. And so the first test we're going to do here is we're going to look at the power output of these two radios. So we're going to start with the Baofeng. Before we get started, let me walk through the parameters of the test. Both radios have had adapters added to them to make them BMC. No difference there. For radios to put out their rated power, they've got to be into a device, a load, which would be an antenna typically, that the impedance matches. And the radios are 50 ohms, so you need an antenna that's 50 ohms. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our 50 ohm load through this, which is a 50 ohm terminator for my scope. So that creates 50 ohm. They'll both put their load into 50 ohm. From that, we're going to run through a short coax to minimize loss, straight into our meter, which is set up channel one. We've got the measurement array turned on. I'm going to transmit. We'll get a reading. Our VRMS is what we're interested in. That's going to be converted to watts very easily. I'll have to hold it transmitting a moment while I hit the print button to get a screen capture. So keyed. Looks like we're getting 14.3 volts. Let's let this thing do its thing here a minute. Okay. Now this will take a moment to capture that screen. It's going to be called Quick Print 1. And this is going to be high power on the valve thing. Okay. So that one's done. So that's high power. This down here. This here. Same everything. 8.3 volts, fully charged, 145 megahertz. I'm on high, get over here where you can see. I'm on high output. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Okay. 14.1 volts. So not quite as much. So let's get a scripture. It's 14.0 now. So let's get a capture of that. It went 14.1 and then to 14.0. So I'm going to call it 14.0 or 14.1, depending on what the capture of the screen is. Okay. Finish capturing. That's quick print two. So that will be our Yezu high power up. We've got a capture of that. So from that, I'm going to stop. I'm going to reset up. And we're going to look at the spectrum output of these two radios. And we're going to compare them and see just what they look like. We'll be right back. 
Okay, we've uh, got a new setup now. Same radios, everything the same there. We've got a dummy load set up for our RF to dump in and give us a 50 ohm load. But we have a RF sampler now, which allows the RF to the dummy load, passes it through, but gives me a minus 40 dB sample. That way, it's a low enough signal that my spectrum analyzer can handle the, the power. Can't put in five watts into a spectrum analyzer. This gets me down low enough that it won't harm it. And since the information we're looking at in the spectrum is all relative power, doesn't matter if I'm taking the full sample or this, it's going to be identical spectrum. It's going to look the same. So let's start out with a Baofeng. We'll hook it up. We'll turn it on. Still on 145, 000. Power is still on high. Let's transmit and see what we get. And then I'll print. Let it run a cycle. Okay, there's what our spectrum looks like. Let's get a screen capture. I'll let it run through one more time. I'm going to call this uh, B for Baofeng. And this will take a moment. doesn't write real fast to the USB for some reason taking screenshots. As soon as we get that captured, we'll turn right around. We'll try the Yezu and see what it looks like. Okay. We'll turn this off. Let's try the Yezu and see what it looks like. Get a spectrum from it. Still full battery. Still on 145 megahertz. Still on high power. And let's see what we get. Right. Let it run through a couple times, kind of get settled. And we'll grab it. And we will call this Y. There we are. Now we can turn off for Yezu. Now, when we did the power measurements, I went ahead and measured all of the power modes. You saw me do the high because that's going to be the one that's really going to be important. But I went ahead and measured the low output on the Baofeng. And Yezu FT70D has three levels, high, mid, low. So I did all three of these. We'll get back to the computer. I'll put them together. I'll show you how we calculate it up and I'll put it in a format where we can compare. We'll take a look at the two spectrums and we'll see what we think with those two. So I'll be right back. All right, now we're on the computer. Let's take a look at some of the findings that we come up with. First, let's take a look at Quick Print 1. Quick Print 1 was the bell thing on high power. And if we look at the VRMS up at the top line on the right hand side, you'll see 14.3 volts. At high output on the bell thing, we were getting 14.3 volts RMS. If I bring over my calculations here. The way that you get to watts is you take your voltage RMS and you square it, which is just it times itself. And then you divide it by the impedance. Now in our case, it's 50 ohms on all of them, but I went ahead and put them in the columns here so it's clear what I'm doing. If we look at the Baofeng GT5R on high power, you can see I put the 14.3 in here and the calculation works out to get 4.0898 watts. There's probably a little fudge there because of loss of my even my short little coax, but it's not much. I mean, we're pretty much, this is where you're at. You're, you're getting about four and pretty well that's agreed upon that the GT5R is about a four watt radio. So if we look at Balfain specs for the GT5R, you can see that they claim five watts and one watt. So let's look at that. We get four watts and one watt. We're not getting five watts. We're meeting their advertisement. We meet one watt on low power, but five watts, it's not doing. Let's take a look at how the FT7D came out. High power, 3.9762. Wow, there's a slight lower power output than the Baofeng, so it's definitely a four watt radio also. You can see you get one and a half watts on mid range, but less than half a watt on low. So you really don't have a one watt choice on this radio. So let's go take a look at the FT70D spec. Here's the spec. Well, look at that. They claim that you're getting 5 watts also for high, 2 for mid, and 0.5 for low. Well, 
we can see that we're definitely not getting 5 watts. We're not making 2 watts. Now, this one I would give them. There's always a little bit of loss going on. I don't think this is going to be accountable for any losses. I think this is not 2 watts coming out. And I don't think this for sure is 5 watts. Both radios claim to be 5. Neither one of them makes 5. And here's the interesting thing. The Baofeng is the higher output radio. It's not much. It's not even thing you would even notice. I'm not claiming that. But what I'm saying is the Yezu, you spent six times as much. You would expect it to meet its spec. You might forgive Valfane if they're a little bit low on their spec. Yezu, with what you're paying, you expect to get what you expect to get. I mean, what they claim, you should see here. So in that one, I'm going to give Valfane the, the uh, win on this one. You can agree or disagree, but I believe it meets its specs better than the Yezu. So now that we've done that, let's take a look at our spectrums now. Here's the Baofeng. Good signal output, 144.167. But if we go up here, I want you to look. Here's the second and the third harmonics. And how you'd get that is, if you took 145 and you multiplied it by 2, you'd be right here. If we take a look at this, we can see that our primary frequency is minus 6 dBm. We're going to round it. Just say minus 6 dBm. We go to our second harmonic. We're calling this 73. So if, it, if you... You calculate how much from here to here difference. You've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 plus some more. It comes out to be 67 is what it is exactly. You're 67 dB down. You're minus 67 dBm between here and there. That blows way beyond the FCC requirements. So you're in great shape. This is a no factor. I mean, this is such a weak signal. At the same time, you've got your third harmonic and it's down even more. It's probably another three dB down, so it's half of that. So, so this is a very clean radio. I wanna be very clear about this. This isn't gonna cause you any problems at all. So let's jump over now and take a look at the Yezu. Now on the Yezu, we see that we're also about six dBm. Basically the same minus six, but here instead of being 73, we're about 60, let's call it 69. It's definitely over 70, we'll call it 69. It's a little bit worse actually. I mean, it's not bad, don't get me wrong. If you take 69 and you subtract off that six, that's 63. There's a three dB difference. This is twice the signal as the Baofeng. And you've got about the same thing here. You're probably three down here. So they're, they're, they're very similar in their three dB drop across here. So basically both of these spurious emissions, twice what the Baofeng's putting out in the exact same equipment, everything the same, same cable, everything. You might not be able to say that the signal's exactly this and the signal, the spur was really putting this much out. But what you can definitely say is comparisonally speaking, on the same equipment, even if my equipment wasn't perfectly calibrated, which it's all fairly new equipment and fairly in calibration, this is still twice the signal as the Baofeng. Now you wouldn't expect that. You pay six times as much for the Yezu, you kind of expect to get, you know, cleaner output than the Baofeng. You kind of expect to get more output than the Baofeng. You expect Yezu to meet its output power. Baofeng, yeah, 25 bucks. Yezu, that's a different story. The question is, is the Baofeng a better radio? Well, I told you that I was going to prove this is not clickbait, and I think I'm doing that. We're looking at fact that we measure, call it myth busting, whatever you want to call it. You know, the myth would be that Baofeng are noisier and don't put the output out. They're just not as good a radio, and I, I think we're doing some myth busting. So the fact of the matter is, is the Baofeng a better radio than the Yezu? In my opinion, these numbers tell me that the GT5R Baofeng, from a spec point of view, better than the Yezu FT70D. As far as spurious emissions, as far as power output, those two specs, which are key specs on a radio, the Baofeng beats the Yezu. Now, I want to be clear here. Now, I'm only talking about the transmit spec. When you compare the receiver on the Yezu FT70D compared to the Bofang GT5R, there's no comparison. The receiver is dramatically different. It's better. It just doesn't compare to the Super Heterodyne in the Yezu. But we're not looking at those specs. We're looking at transmit. Now, when you look at both radios, the specs I've shown you show that the Baofeng, not much, barely, barely beats out the Yezu. But is that a fair comparison? Well, from a technical aspect, probably so. But when you look at the spectrum of these two radios, while there is 
twice the spurious emission levels out of the Jesu in my tests. And it's not a scientific test. You'd have to have numerous versions of this and numerous versions of this in case there's some little factory difference. Maybe my Yezu is not typical. Maybe my Baofeng is not typical. But it's reasonable to assume if you buy them off the shelf, you get what you get. So I think it was a fair comparison at our level. Is it a big deal? No, not really. Because as I hinted at in the earlier in the video, the levels that this Yezu is putting out is so far below what the FCC allows that the levels coming out of it is not a factor. It's never going to get in to be an issue. You're never going to cause problems for people in other bands. You're never going to, it's just not going to be an issue. So it's like saying, this is great. This is great, but not quite as great. Okay. That's really what we're saying. We're saying this is great on emissions. This is great on emissions. This is to be funny. This is just gooder. It's just a little gooder than this when it comes to emissions. You're never going to notice it. It's never going to come factor. How about the power output? The power output of these radios at high is so close, you would never tell the difference. I do not believe there's a case that you'll make communications with this radio. You wouldn't with this because of that slight difference in output. But I'm a little disappointed in Yezu that if this is advertised to be a 5 watt radio, being Yezu and being, being a premium radio that you pay a lot for, you expect 5 watts out of it. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. I'm not as disappointed from Baofeng because they say it's a 5 watt radio. It's a $25 radio. Yes, you, technically if you're going to put specs out, you should meet your specs always. So here's what it comes down to. Am I disappointed I spent six times as much money on this Yezu? No. I'm not. In fact, I think this is a fantastic value. I'd recommend this radio to anyone. It has this quirk. When it comes to the rest of the interface on this radio, it's the best handheld interface I've ever used. As far as programming frequencies, doing all of that, this thing is superior to everything I've ever used. Compared to this Baofeng, this, is, this thing is a nightmare compared to this programming. It's just what you're used to, I'm sure, but I find the menus for programming things, not settings in the radios. Both of these do a good job of that. I find no problem with that. I think they did, you know, did a good job on the valve thing on that. All the advanced things for programming repeaters and stuff like this, this, this is just a little bit of a pain compared to this. Great radio. The other thing is this is, you know, this is the elephant in the room we've got to talk about. This has digital. This doesn't. Is that a big deal? Well, yeah. If you want to experiment with the digital, if you want to get on a fusion re, uh, repeater, this does it. This won't. So you've got a lot of capabilities in this radio you don't have in this radio. One other thing is build. Always got to talk about build quality. This thing is, is very polished. It's very well built. Everything feels good. Nothing feels cheap. And let's face it, the Baofeng, everything feels cheap. Everything on this radio feels cheap. It's all very plasticky. I mean, I, yeah, there's a lot. This is all plastic too. It just feels like good plastic, if you will. This feels like cheap plastic. The fit and finish. Everything about the radio is is a twenty five dollar radio. Everything about this radio is one hundred and fifty dollar radio. So no, I'm not disappointed. I spent the money for this radio. I bought this because it was so cheap to use it as a fox hunting transmitter for. And just an extra handheld when I need it. In the end, I've got to say, no, the Baofeng's not a better radio than the Yezu. Overall, the Yezu stands way ahead. The FT70D stands way ahead of the GT5R. Quality, fit, finish, functionality, capabilities. It just beats. If you just look at the specs of the Spectrum and you just look at the specs of the power output, they're pretty close but this one nudges it out. What I want you to walk away from this is, if you've got a modern GT5R, don't let any other ham give you a hard time about your cheap radio. If they do, send them this video and tell them, oh yeah, well guess what? Baofeng is better than Yezu's FT70D. But remember, only in certain regards. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you found this educational. I hope it entertained you a little bit. Have a great day. See you in the next video.